We've all been there. The child says they'll care for the pet and then they don't. And then you start wondering, why did we ever do this? I'm Nicolene Peck and I teach all about parenting, good communication. And in this video, we're talking about how to not let your child's lack of pet care ruin the pet experience. <laughs> we're going to be talking about some of the problems that can occur with having a pet and what to do about it so that your child has the greatest success of enjoying that pet experience and so that you do too. So children love pets and pets teach children great things. It seems like that should be a win-win, right? It teaches the child responsibility. So the child learns, uh-oh, if I don't feed my dog, my dog will start howling in the night because my dog is hungry because he didn't get any food. No, the child doesn't actually always learn those lessons very well. In fact, the child might sleep right through it. But are you going to sleep right through the dog howling? Probably not. So you're going to learn the cause and effect that the dog needs someone to feed them for sure. And you will know at that point in the middle of the night that the child did not feed the dog like they promised that they would do when you got that pet. Well, sometimes the children get busy. Sometimes they get lazy. Sometimes they don't want to deal with it. And they don't recognize that, that this living thing is depending upon them. So number one, do not ever think when you're going into the pet experience with your children that your children will fully take care of that pet. They won't. So what you need to do is you need to plan on being part of that pet experience. You need to plan on loving that pet and wanting that pet. Otherwise, you will have a horrible experience because at some point or another, it's going to come back on you and you don't want to let that be a source of contention in the family. The pet should increase connection and love and not do just the opposite of that. So try not to power struggle over the pet. That will make it all the more that you don't like the pet. So only get a pet if you really want one and want to be taking care of that pet part of the time. Everybody's going to have to pitch in, even that person that says that they're going to do the whole thing they probably won't do the whole thing and so you'll have to help them out. Okay, so what do you do then if they're starting to not take care of the pet, the pet is suffering, you're hating it, how do you fix this experience so that the whole pet experience that is supposed to create love and attachment and a sense of responsibility for your child doesn't get completely ruined? Well, let's talk about that. So hopefully, like I mentioned in my video about should a children be allowed to take care of pets alone, I talked about creating a plan. So you're gonna create this plan with your child for who's gonna take care of what, when, how you're gonna correct situations if they come up, that kind of thing. Hopefully you've laid out that plan ahead of time. If you have, that's gonna make things a whole lot easier for you going forward, especially when the plan starts to fall apart. So if the plan is made, you're probably not gonna find yourself power struggling as much. You could fall into nagging because a lot of people do that when it comes to the pets. Don't fall into nagging. Instead, use your skills that you've planned to use ahead of time. Now, do you know what those skills are? If not, we're going to talk about those skills and we're going to talk about how to correct the situation when the child is not doing what they should. But first, subscribe to this channel. That way you will get more help learning skills to help your child and your whole family learn self-government. If you want your child to take care of a pet and be held accountable, then you need to pre-teach them ahead of time for what the situation is going to look like. So as you're planning out that pet care, make sure that you tell them, now remember that skill we learned, that self-government skill that Nicolene Peck taught us with her course, her TSG parenting course, or in that book, uh, London LeRae says, okay, which teaches how to follow instructions. Remember that skill. Well, we are going to be using that skill when it comes to pet care. So you have an instruction to feed your pet every morning before school. And remember to follow an instruction, you look at the person or the situation, you keep a calm face, voice, and body, you say okay or ask to disagree appropriately, then you do the task immediately and then check back. So what you need to do is every morning, you need to wake up, go feed your pet, and then come tell me that it's done. 
That's the check back. And I will praise you every morning. If you don't come to me and tell me that the pet has been fed, then right before you go to school, I will be checking the pet's dish. If the pet was not fed as I'm walking out the door to school to take you to school or wherever you happen to go in the morning or whatever, then I will look at you and say, oh, the pet did not get fed in time. So I will feed the pet when we get home, but you will need to feed the pet the nighttime feeding or and then you will also have another extra chore because you didn't follow instructions. So you explain to the child how it's going to play out and then you follow through. So let's say you had to feed the pet, you had to feed the dog or the cat because your child forgot. The most important thing that you can do to be successful and to not let this lack of pet care ruin the pet experience for everybody in the family is to decide it's okay. To decide that you're okay feeding the pet. Don't take it personal. You need to accept a no answer too. So one of the four basic skills is accepting a no answer. We already talked about following instructions. There's two of the skills. And just so you know, the book that teaches accepting no answers is a book called Porter Earns a Quarter. And it's also taught in my course, of course. But when a person learns to accept a no answer, they look at the person or the situation, they keep a calm face, voice, and body about it, and then they say okay or disagree appropriately and drop the subject. Can you stay calm? Can you say, well, okay, I guess I've got to feed the dog. I mean, I knew that going into it. And then can you do it and drop the subject afterward? Meaning you don't think about it anymore. You don't tell anybody how horrible it was that your child didn't do it. You don't get grumpy about it with your child later or use a bad attitude when you're telling them that they need to do some pet maintenance later on in the day. Can you do it? Can you drop the subject? That's going to be the very most important thing. The way you think about the pet, the way you think about your child and the pet, the way that you decide to embrace the learning experience of taking care of a pet or not will make all of the difference for you and for your child. If you increase stress for the child by nagging and by taking things personally or speaking in a way that's harsh to the child about the pet, then that will actually make it so that the child has a feeling that will make it even harder for them to follow through with pet maintenance because they will have stress. And when they have stress about the pet maintenance, that puts them, puts them in the mid part of the brain, which is the wrong part of the brain for solving problems and remembering things. So if they're feeling stressed more often because they don't want your emotional reaction to occur, they're probably going to forget even more things. So let's decrease the stress by creating a plan and then just calmly following through with those corrections. If a child gets the opportunity to earn another extra chore because they didn't do their pet maintenance, that's enough to teach them cause and effect and hopefully remind them next time. And don't forget that when you do a correction, it's always a good idea for you to practice things the right way or talk about what should have happened the right way. And if you really want to touch the heart, make sure that you bring how the pet is going to be processing the situation into the conversation as well. The, pro the pet needs connection, the pet needs bonding, the pet needs a feeling of safety and knowing that they've been cared for, and the child can deliver all of those things. And so bring that in as a good rationale to keep the child motivated, but don't load on the guilt or any type of harsh treatment because they're a child. They're gonna forget a lot of the time. And if you can accept that, it will make everything better. So I've talked about a few skills here in this video, but they are just a few compared to the skills that I teach in my teaching self-government training. If you are interested in learning more about the teaching self-government skills, there is a video that you should definitely watch next. It's a full length class and it is called the not so known secret for parenting success. Click on the link to that full length class right now so that you can learn more about how to teach yourself and your family the skills and principles of self-government.